welcome back to my camping gear creation series. The next thing I want to try and make is a uh, candle lantern. Now I've made plenty of these things before, these candle holders, but it's not something you'd want to take camping. So I wanted to take the same candle as this one does, one of these, but I want something that's lighter than this and provides at least a bit of shielding from the wind. But ages ago my mum gave me this bag of coffee tins. She gave me these because they look useful, and they do look useful, but I haven't found a use for them until now. So looking at these, I figured there's, this has got a perfect shape as a starting point to make some kind of lantern thing. So in addition to remembering that I had a stash of tins, I remembered that I've got a book on the subject. This is a great little book full of interesting things to make out of tin plate, none of which I've attempted before until now. There's all sorts in this book from this really simple stuff like this. To <laughs> really rather elaborate models like these. What I'm interested today though is these little lanterns. So we've got a really simple one here, and this is just um, a tin can, so it's, it's basically one of these, but with the roof. And there's a plan on doing the, the, the little roof bit there. I did consider making one of these um, pierced tin versions. You know, that would be quite nice. But then I thought it'd be, I'll be a bit more ambitious and try and put a window into it. I'm not going to make this one, not quite, because um, rather than a piece of glass, which is what they use here, um, I got hold of some mica, and I'm going to use that for my window. This piece of mica I got from eBay, um, super cheap, like a couple of quid. It's actually um, a, a spare part for a paraffin heater. It's the little window that you look through to look at the flame. You might be wondering what mica is. Mica is a mineral that's found mainly in the Himalayas. It's something like slate and can be split into very thin transparent sheets and it's also very resilient. It's fairly resilient. Although costly to obtain and transport, it withstands great temperature without any noticeable effect and is therefore ideal for use in inspection windows in heaters. So there it is. You can see how thin it is. And if you imagine a piece of glass at this thickness or even a piece of glass four times this thickness, I wouldn't be able to do that with the piece of glass. The big challenge <laughs> with this project is going to be soldering um, the various components together. Now I. I do know how to solder things, but only in the sense of wiring and a bit of emergency plumbing. That's it. I've never used soldering to stick pieces of metal together. Here's most of my soldering kit. I've got uh, leaded solder, uh, unleaded solder, flux, and probably the most useful thing is going to be this big soldering iron. I think this is big enough to do the job. I've also disconnected the burner on the gas forge and put the hose on the end of my old blowtorch. So I've got a propane powered option, but I think really the flame from this is going to be too fierce for, well, for, for most of the tasks. Oh, I did, in preparation for this project, I did buy another blowtorch. Um, it's only just arrived. I opened the box and had it, uh, it's quite horrible. <laughs> It, it really is, I'm not sure if this comes across on camera, but it is proper, it looks like, it looks like a toy. It really does. It looks like a cheap toy. Mm. It was only 15 pounds, I think. So I wasn't expecting much and, and I'm still disappointed. <laughs> I might fire it up later and see. What I was after was a blowtorch with a really fine flame that would run off a propane tank rather than off the, because uh, the little bottles get really expensive if, you, if you're running them for a long time. I've also got some more solder so we should be covered for that. Despite my general ignorance of the subject of soldering, there's a couple of things I do know about it. Uh, one is that everything has to be super duper clean and I found with these tins, because they're just covered in a really sort of thin lacquer, I found the, I could clean these really easily by basically cooking the tin with the big torch here, just enough to burn that lacquer, and then it scrubs off quite easily with um, wire wool, which I'll show you all that in a moment. Here's one I prepared earlier. 
And the second thing, the second really important thing, is the importance of wetting. So, and this is something that soldering has in common with, say, painting or even with welding. And to wet the surface, so if there's any contaminants in there, it means that what you're doing will just sit on top. It'll, it'll bead up if it's paint and it, it won't settle out and coat it properly. And it's just the same with solder. If you've got any contaminants in there, it will just blob on top. So wetting is the process and to make the solder wet onto the surface, not only does it have to be clean, that's where the flux comes in as well. And so I experimented with this tin and you can see here, see that massive load of, well it's a very thin layer, it's basically just tinning. This is the process of tinning the metal. But if I can put down that super thin layer perfectly smoothly on there and do that with another piece of metal and then they will join together. So those are the two things I'm going to try and bear in mind. Uh, yes, so cleaning it and wetting it. I'll prepare this one for working on and then we'll have one to use as the actual body of the lantern and we can use the other tin, I can cut it and we'll use that for sheet material. I did two, that's enough to get us started. So we'll start by making the door because that's the main unknown, because it's, it's not, the, not the door that they use in there. Such thin material compared to what I'm used to working with, which is both good and bad. <laughs> I'll tell you what we need to get rid of the cross in there, don't we? Turn over on here somewhere. Yeah. What I had in mind for the door was something like a rectangle. Make two of these and solder them together and then the, obviously the micro would be in the middle. But now I've got this line here, I'm thinking what I might be able to do is just to make, instead of two of these, just make one of them, but have extra wings on it there which I can fold back, so wrap around the back and then the mic can have somewhere to slide in. If we mark. This is just to square up this edge because it's all over the shop at the moment. Fold me off the bottom. Fold me off the top. That's what I should have done. <laughs> I should have had a, another bit extending top and bottom that could have folded over. If I cut the corners off and folded that over, yeah, that, you know, now I thought of it, I might have to do that. So that's the shape I should have cut out before. So we've got tags top and bottom now as well as on the sides. Yeah. The top one there just stiffens up that top side. So we've got the curve at the bottom and then at the top the, the curve goes in as I pinch in these bits. That is going to work. Whew. 
<laughs> well, there we go. That's a... I hope the rest of it doesn't take quite long. But that's the bit I had to invent, I guess. Of course, now I've got to turn this tiny little window into a tiny little door by putting hinges on it and a catch. And bear in mind, I've got to put the top on this yet. No, let's do it. If I scribe it, I can make those lines straight because that's square on the bottom. The thing is, this time is that this part and obviously the base make this quite rigid compared to what I've been cutting so far. So I'm thinking therefore I should be able to stab through it with this. <laughs> well, that's a poor start. That's interesting. So I'll cut that way along the score line. That's what I should have done. Scored it much more heavily and then this would probably have put up a lot less of a fight. Okay, so we've got the aperture, we've got the door, now we need a hinge. So what I've got to do basically is get a piece of wire, 2mm wire is what they say in here, wrap metal around it and then cut it in into three pieces. And two of those pieces I'll solder to the body and one to the door. There's a start increase in it. Yeah, I think I can just roll it around there. I should have made that crease a little bit deeper in. So what, what I'm trying to make is a tube around the, the pin. Getting there. Now this will be the pin for the hinge and this needs to be cut into thirds now. All right, so I'm, I'm okay with the concept of what's, what we're trying to do now. It's just the, actually making it happen. So this will be my first bit of soldering and it's, it's a bit technical. Yeah, so that goes like that. And then that just sits there. So you can get solder with lead in it and solder without lead. Um, the stuff with lead is supposed to be slightly easier to work with. Uh, that's what I'm going to go for. Unleaded solder is for plumbing where you're going to be in contact with the solder. Or potable water as they call it. I have no idea what's in flux. I think it's somewhat corrosive. And only very mildly so. But flux generally is for cleaning the surfaces and avoiding um, oxides. And oxides form as soon as you heat metals and it's just another you can consider an oxide to be contamination in the, in this regard go on yeah it doesn't want to stick to that yeah, that's better there we go. <laughs> That's really ugly. I shall come back to it. But that part of the hinge is now stuck onto there. Just, just a little bit. Like a tack weld. That was just a lack of flux. That's all that was going on there. Let's try and get that bit there up. There we go. That's loads there. Just not enough flux. That's what it was. There we go. So it's it's immediately obvious when it actually 
wets onto the surface that you're trying to get it to stick to. So that's now actually tacked in place. So you see how the hinge is stuck onto the body. Now I think if I put that down there, it's only got to grip it really lightly. Put that there. That should give us enough access to get in there. Okay, let's see if that will be a little bit more. Far up and down as I need it to. I'm just tidy that up. Like so. <laughs> I kind of yes. Uh, I'm pleased with myself, but yeah, also horrified because it's. It's such an ugly fixing at the moment, but um, there we go. So my first ever bit of soldering two bits of metal together, and I've made a, a mechanism. So next I'm going to tidy these bits up. Now if you know anything about soldering, this probably looks horrific to you, but that is much tidier than it was a moment ago. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do, while I've got access in there and down there, I'll put in the actual candle holder, or make the candle holder and then put it in. Yeah, yeah forget, forget tin steps, this scissors. This one's out. Now what I'm thinking is if I just cut in along here, then when I roll it around it'll turn into a cylinder with a load of tags sticking out the bottom. So what I'm hoping for is if I curve that round. So then when it goes in there'll be something to solder onto the floor of the lantern. This might even be a bit easier because the parts are in close contact this time. The um, solder should be drawn into the joint by capillary action. There's a big blob there, that's, that's where there's no flux I'm presuming, so it's, that's not doing anything that bit. I've got to get that to stick in there on the floor. What I'd like to do is try and uh, tin the inside of that before I try putting this in. I'm tempted to break out the blowtorch, but what I don't want to do is get any heat travel up here and the door fall off. That'd be most upsetting. Yeah, that is now stuck down. Good. Now, we need a roof. So the roof bit then, and we've got one there as a, as a pattern. Sure there's, yeah, there's a bigger pattern here. I'm just guessing the size. <laughs> this is just to see what it looks like. No, not quite. <laughs> hmm. 
Yes, I think that'll work. I'm just trying to set it and then get the clamp out of the way and finish it off. Right, I'm going to go and wash this under the tap, get rid of all this fluxes on it, and then I'm going to use the sander, I think, to <laughs> make it make it finish it off. Yes. For some reason I was under the impression that um, flux would come off with soap and water, but it didn't. <laughs> Even industrial degrease it didn't touch it. But these alcohol wipes um, are cleaning up nice. So what we need to do now is to make up this part, the sort of shield. Because you can imagine with this going on here, I've basically made a funnel for all the heat from the candle to go up there. So if this was on a on a hook hanging <laughs> hanging in your tent, yeah, it's going to go bad. So we need that. That's just a little shield there to disperse the heat out of the sides. Um, it looks fairly straightforward. It says just bend with your fingers until it looks like that. So that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Bloody vague, isn't it? So it's getting there. Alright, I need a hole in that. The next stage is quite daunting. I've got to stick the roof on the body of the lantern. Somehow get a, a ring of solder all the way around here, which means pumping lots of heat into the roof section here and trying to get that solder to go where I want it to go without getting the heat in this bit and this falling apart and uh, there's, there's a lot to go wrong. Um, and of course I've got no idea really how to do this. Now according to the book here, you just get a tin that will accommodate the cone, like so. You can see the issue, <laughs> this is all rather wibbly. Um, do you want that on? Yeah, I'm going to put it there. And then it's well, secured is not the right word, but then it's all tenuously held in place, let's say, by putting a heavy weight on top of the whole stack. Now, I can use this to get everything squared up quite nicely. So that's how it should go. I'm going to try using this horrible thing. This fitting that came with it, that doesn't, that doesn't quite screw onto the bottle. But even if it did, there's no regulator, so I don't know how you're supposed to use. <laughs> that would be unwise to use that anyway. I'm just going to get rid of the whole hose, put this burner on the end of that hose, because we've got a regulator in line there. That should all be fine. Well, in fairness, that's the flame that I was after. <laughs> I'll give it that much. It is the that is the right flame. I'm just thinking if that goes in there, it's exactly sinking position, isn't it? I'm just going to see if I can persuade that solder down <sighs> without it just running. <laughs> All the way down. I don't know. It really is. But I do actually quite like this torch. 
all of a sudden. Mm. Yeah, that's way too much there. Oh, there we go, it's doing. It's a quarter for such thin metal. Well, it's looking good. Oh, bloody hell, I think we might have it. Can you see around there? I've left that little bit where the seam is, just that half inch I've left. The rest is all. <laughs> that, works. that works way better than I was expecting it to. That horrible little burger, that furnace, that really did the job. That's a, the ideal focused flame, which this one just doesn't do with this, um, with this burner on it. So yes, I'm, I'm glad I didn't complete the circle now because there's a blob that came out of somewhere. Anyway, I could just see that popping apart. But other than that little section, that's all properly in there. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> not, yeah, not my skill level or anything, because. That's literally the first time I've tried that, but it's amazing that um, it, it, that went so smoothly and it's properly on. Whew. So just a little door catch left, um, and then it's a case of tidying it up and then assembling the little hook bit. Uh, so I've just scored that and once it's scored it folds a lot easier. So we've got a doubled up piece there. You can see I've folded it over so it's it's smooth on you when you touch it. And then I'm just gonna roll up the end and <laughs> try and make a scroll. And I can take that and put it, I reckon put it on the inside of the door. More flux there. Yes, super duper. Mm. Do nothing. Ugh. Well. <laughs> that was easy, wasn't it? Get rid of this flux, and then we're on to final assembly. Well, and uh, tidying up, which is going to take a while. Yeah, so this has got to go over there and then roll over the other end. So it needs to be lop an inch off of that. In. The mica is in. Now we've got to persuade it to all conform to the right shape. Okay, back up there. Silly thing. <laughs> so it is getting hot enough that some of the solder on the back there is going 
getting shiny, so it's actually starting to loosen up. What I'm going to do then is drill a load of holes, which I should have done before. That seam where it started to open up, I've got my box of pop rivets here. These are the smallest pop rivets I've got, and I'm going to try putting those, a couple of those down the seam. I think that's just for peace of mind. Well that's much better, it's been running for quite a while now and there's no trace of the same sort of heat build up on the seam there. So I'm calling that a win. To see what it's actually like in, in the weather <laughs> and at night, um, you'll have to wait until I actually go on my trek. But I think that makes the grade for at least taking it along with me and seeing what happens. I had a lot of fun making that, I really did, that was really enjoyable. and. I've learned a new skill. I've learned how to solder bits of metal together, not just a, um, fixing a bit of wiring or whatever. Oh, and a big thank you to my mum for providing me with all the raw materials. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.